The one where I really stood Excel. out in was the, the weapons department. So I was a gunner's mate. At that point, I started studying to become a gunner's mate. So you learn about different systems, different big guns, small guns, handguns, long guns, etc. And we maintain and we shoot a lot. How do we prevent these types of events from happening? This is not, not just school shootings. There's also terrorism related yes. things that we deal with. You, you can't impede on someone's freedom of speech. It's not being paranoid. To me, it's stopping the bleeding. It, it's stopping that digital trail, right? I'm not running from the government. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm hiding my information from adversaries that can take me down and take us down or take my company down. So it's very important. A lot of C-suite level folks and high net worth individuals are doing this not just for them, but they're for their families. They're even blurring out Google images of their homes Grabe, on Google Maps. No? This is how far people have to go, right? In order to protect their own privacy. Welcome to the Paco's Place podcast. Visit abbotteservices.com for fast medical transcription service. This podcast episode is brought to you by AB Music Creative. And the podcast will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charlie Wicker. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Charlie. <laughs> Daming tanong eh. I have I have so many questions. You've been you you, you kumbaga, if this is the state, if this is society, you have you actually have privilege to see what goes on behind our society. Or you have an idea of what goes on behind it. That's part of what you do. To, to see why you know, these bad people do what they do and anticipate when or why they would do it. Tama ba? Or? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wouldn't see everything, but... Uh, for the most part, we do we do uh, get a sneak peek into what bad folks uh, plan to right. do, and then actually, unfortunately, most of the time, it's after they've done something. Uh, we have to study it in order to learn about what the next person will do. How that hard? Makes any sense. It, it makes perfect sense. So pretty much, we are far, far away from Minority Report. We cannot just assume that someone's going to commit a crime and then. Lock him up. Why? What pre-crime? Happened? Pre-crime? Pre-crime, di ba? Oh, man, I love that movie. Can I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I say I love that movie? Yeah. Di Great ba? movie. Minority Report, di ba? Right. But constitutionally, we can't do that. We can't, because yeah. you're innocent until proven otherwise. Correct. You, <sighs> so many questions. Very frustrating also. Like when, yeah. when I told uh, my, my, my friends that I was having you as a guest, they were like, ask him about Yun nga, yung mga active shooter, mga, yung, mga, yung mga sa school, mga ganun. Right, right. Sa Philippines, because you grew up in the Philippines at one point, we'll talk about that later, may mga security guard yung mga schools natin and they have guns. Absolutely. Dito bawal. I wouldn't say bawal. There, there are schools that do have school resource officers, right? Okay. They're, they're, those are what you call them. Right. School resource right. They have SROs in, in a lot of the different schools. Mga cops. Depend, yeah. Depending, yeah, depending on the school system. Okay. Right? There are private schools that have, uh, you know, different types of levels of security as well. Not necessarily police officers, but armed guards, right? Some of them are plain clothes. Some of them are pure, you know, armed police guys <laughs> in uniform. You know what I mean? Some are undercover, some are not. So it really does depend on what school system right. you're dealing with. So, but, you know, that's not the only solution because everybody wants to go, oh, my God, let's, let's put the military in build a 3,000 mm. foot wall and yeah. you know, do all these things. You can do all that. But one person leaves the back door open, forget about it, right? Correct. Like what we say. So really what we do goes a little deeper than that. Um, you want to think about and look at motivation. You want to see, you know, are, are these kids espousing uh, behaviors Behavior, indicative of, you know, uh, pre-violent action? Because every kid wants to go me, 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 mm, right? Yes. On the, yeah. On the Instagram. Yeah. And all the grams, and, you know. <laughs> to, to get, to, to garner attention, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's a cry for help most of the times, and sometimes it's just a warning. By the way, I'm coming. And if you're not looking out for these types of things, right, if you just don't care because you've only planned to react to these types of situations, it's a problem. You're only looking at one side Right. The problem. You're not looking at the other. 
like to ask the question um is everything okay like let's say like like let's say i have a friend si michael abad kunyari and he's posting uh all of a sudden post started posting guns or violence or you know anything pertaining to to something that's not normally him i think as a friend i i could easily ask michael abad hey is everything okay absolutely you know uh michael that i've known him for a long time uh i think context is really key yes right yes so when you see you see that sharp turn mm. from good boy light, light to dark yes if we we call it that yes one, um that could be right we call it a pre-incident indicator so you know it really depends on what's happening and with a lot of these kids we don't know Ooh. the parents don't know the parents are busy at work right they're not really paying that much of attention uh, some of these kids don't have two parents. It takes a lot of work yeah. to, to raise some of these kids. So, you, you know, you, you really have to look at context. And I'll give you an example. We were called to a school once, a charter school, and they said, this kid, we're going to arrest him. He's 13 years old. He brought a fruit knife to work. I mean, to school. Sorry, not to, not to work. To school. And so the principal called me and said, what are we going to do here? We have a threat management team, and the police just want to put this kid in handcuffs. Uh, because one of the, the, the kids reported him to their parents. The parents called the police, say this kid has a knife in school. So I asked, what's the context? And they said, what, you, what is that? Did he threaten anybody with the knife? Did he chase after somebody? Did he make a conditional threat? Right. Did he threaten students? No. Is he a straight-A student? Is he a good student? Has he had any disciplinary action? Zero. His story is... He has to walk two miles home every day from school, pick up a fruit knife, walk back another mile to help his parents cut fruit on the side of the street. This is how they make money. Right? Uh, they sell fruit. So one day he decided, I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to bring the knife to school. Look, what he did was wrong. Of course, yes. don't bring weapons to school. Yes. But you got to look at the context. Right. Right. So what are we going to do? Arrest this kid. Give him a record for the rest. This record follows you. For the rest of your life, yeah. Forever and ever, amen. It's bankruptcy. Absolutely. Right? To seven years, I think. I uh, <laughs> no, but when you fill up an application, right? Oh, you have to put it in, yeah. Otherwise, you're lying. Yes. But so, you know, that's the context. And we, you know, talk the school into, let's not jam these kids up, you know, his right. life. Correct. Or the Correct. rest of his life, right? This, this is, you got to look at context. If he made an online threat, he threatened his students, or you know, uh, uh, you know, classmates, and you know, he put threats everywhere. Then yes, obviously that's. Because we have markers, yeah, di ba? Pre-incident uh, indicator, mga ganon, di ba? Correct. Indicators. We call them PIIs, pre-incident PII. pre -incident indicators. Yon. Speaking of kids, uh, and this this thirteen year old boy, nung thirteen ka, he had a very colorful childhood also. Eh. Me? May uh, may mga PII ka ba no? <laughs> nung bata? Ka. Who told you this? <laughs> Total PII din ang pinag-uusapan. Takes one to know one, I guess. <laughs> but, but, but growing up, what, what, what's your history? Like, you grew up in the Philippines. You have a, a non-Filipino last name. Not to say na pati last name ko hindi rin naman Pinoy. Pero, <laughs> pero ako mukhang Pinoy, ikaw mukhang katisoy. So, what's your history? Um, my mom is Vietnamese and my dad is white. And we lived in the Philippines. So, you know, so, okay. me and my siblings, there's, there's seven of us total. How many boys um, and girls? Uh, there's four boys, three girls. Okay. And um, I'm second to the youngest. You, you know, grew up in Manila. Yeah. Uh, just being us. This is all we knew, right? Living in the Philippines and having a great time, I guess. You know, could say, <laughs> looking back, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we really had it good there. <laughs> you come here, you have to work. Of course. Um, and work, you know, three, four, five jobs, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I did have a little colorful, uh, what do you call this, teenage You're not time, <laughs> right? Um, but I'm not going to talk much about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not talk much about that. I but, had a lot of good friends, but but yung, yeah, but you, <laughs> right? Yung yung teenage life more did that um, open your eyes? Now you know when I grow up, maybe this could be a profession, a career, or an advocacy. When did it? 
when did that turning point happen? <laughs> you give me way too much credit. You give my childhood way too much credit. Um, no, I wasn't even thinking about anything, really. I was just thinking about hanging out with the barcada. This is true, right? Mm -hmm. Hanging out the, the next day with your barcada or, you know, having a good time. You know, I think when it, it got to the point where my dad was like, uh, hello. <laughs> 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 you can't just keep sitting around doing nothing, right? Uh, you either need to get a job or move out, figure it out. Wow. And at the time, my mom was living in San Francisco. So I was like, hmm, you know what? I'll take option two. Move out. <laughs> move out. So from the Philippines, you went to San Francisco. Yeah, you're an adult now, right? So my, I went with my sister. She took me over. And yeah, it was, it was a real um, eye-opening because by then I was 18. So, so oh my God. done with high school. I left the good life. I know, right? <laughs> so, na college ka kagad na nagtrabaho ka. No, no, no. I went straight to uh, straight to Pizza Hut. Galeng, no University that's of you, Pizza Hut, that's right? Where you start. UPH. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> I was a dough master. You the <laughs> master's degree, UPH. <laughs> First job, master already. Di ba? <laughs> Master, wow. Ano ba yung UPH, University of Pizza Hut? <laughs> Go, Master. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, yes. right? Did it humble you or did it no, no, make well, you hate your dad? Uh, no, 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 no. I never hated my dad. Um, you know, may, maybe temporarily despised the, yeah. the, the fact that, oh, man, I, I left all of that yes, to, yes. for this. Yes. Uh, riding a bicycle at four in the morning to, you know, Dang. three miles. Yeah. Oh, wow. To go uh, work. But you know what? It, I think it humbled me, number one. Amen. Number two, it made me think about, hmm, what's next? What can I do next? Okay. Let me, let me, that rhetoric now, what's next? Because our audience... Um, sabi nga namin ni Michael, if we're able to inspire just one person with your episode, we've done our job, no? Yung what's next na yun. Remember, sa Philippines, happy-go-lucky. Uh, you, had, you had the good life and all that stuff. Ang concept mo ng what's next is, ano kaya ang gimmick ko bukas? That's what that was the concept in the Philippines. Ano kaya, <laughs> sino kaya ang gagaguhin ko bukas? So, <laughs> sino kaya inisin ko bukas? Wow. Pero pagdating sa Amerika, same question, what's next? Pero uh, you're, you, were you looking toward your future na? You know, at that point, I, I thought about it. Number one, this is unsustainable. Do master, okay. first job. Mm. <laughs> you know, 18, let's, yeah. Let's get another job. Went across the street, got another job at Arby's. Right? Now I can, I can earn some money, yeah. buy a car. What's so next? double job. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. One after the other. 16-hour uh, shift. Until I ate too many roast beef sandwiches. But know. anyways... Um, <laughs> I get the bashiot too. Uh, you know, <laughs> I wasn't eating a lot of bread, so I was just slicing meat and putting oh, cheese in the bar. So good. Oh, uh, no? yeah. The best. Um, I was riding the bike home one day, um, got home, turned the TV on, and I saw a commercial, U.S. Navy. My dad was, you know, a captain in the Navy a long time ago. Uh, and then from there, he, he went to the OSS, and then he went into the CIA. That's what he did. Okay. All right, let's clear that up for all everybody in Manila. <laughs> so, um, and he always wanted at least one of us boys to go go into the Navy. But go, he never forced you guys to do that. No, no, no. He, he was not the forceful kind of... He suggest. Suggested. Sometimes Persuaded. Strong, sometimes strongly <laughs> suggested. <laughs> okay. This is a family tradition. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I saw a commercial. I'm like, oh, man, I missed my dad. And uh, at that point, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do something that no one's ever going to expect that I could do. I'm going to make a decision for myself. Wow. And I did. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> an, adult, <laughs> an adult decision. Ooh, Navy pain. Wow. Well, yeah. You know, it's, so, like a, it's like a cruise. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Peeled potatoes, what do you do? Everything. Wow. Everything. When you when you join as an enlisted person, you know, you, you don't know where you're going. No. Oh, it's on the continent. They make it they painted a very nice picture. Yes. Yeah? On eggshells that are cracked. <laughs> <laughs> then by the time the bus door opens to get out into boot camp, Mulani picture. What I've been looking at. Um 
Yeah, the, the yelling starts, the screaming starts. Wait, wait, you know, wait, wait, wait. You made the decision, and whom did you tell? Oh, my brother. I was living with my brother at the time okay. in Sunnyvale, California. Uh, that's where he lived. That was. And, and um, you know, he was like, you did what? I said, I joined the Navy. You, what are you talking about? You joined the Navy. I signed the contract. I showed him the contract. He goes, oh, man, dad's going to kill you. You know, that's the first thing he said to me. I was like, too late. <laughs> okay, and, and your go, mom? I ship out in, uh, I told him I ship out in two months. He goes, why two months? Why not two days? He goes, well, they said <laughs> I was too skinny now. Talaga? Oh, yeah, I was, I was well, Mike knows I was, uh, you know. Skinny. Crackhead skinny back then. Ah. I was very skinny, very hyper yeah. kid, right? Played soccer, yeah. played the drums. Yeah. Or pretended to play the drums, <laughs> uh, you know, very kite kite kind of kid, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I ate some bananas and you know drank some beers. That's a whole. You want to fatten up? Eat bananas, drink beers, no? Bananas and beer. Okay. That's banana and beer diet. Okay. So where most people in boot camp are trying to lose weight. Yeah, you were trying to. Gain I was weight. trying to gain weight, right? So I, I finally got to the whatever weight that was. I don't know. It was one twenty five or something, because uh, they didn't want me to die in boot camp. Yes. Right. And then from there, they shipped me down to San Diego and I did the whole thing. That's history from there. But you know, How did it feel? How did it feel from, from um, living in the Philippines na may mga, ano ka, may mga servants ka, ta- may mga house help, tapos naging dough master sa Pizza Hut, <laughs> tapos nag Arby's. You said it was humbling. And then there's joining the military because not because you wanted to join the military, but because you had you wanted to prove to everybody and to yourself that you can make a decision. Yeah. You I also mo. wanted to join the military. Oh, you yeah. wanted yeah. to? Okay, okay. Yeah, I thought. I mean, obviously, at that point, you come to a turning point. You you come to a crossroads of fast food or military, <laughs> <laughs> right? Now, that's where I was. What else was I thinking about? That's what I was. Okay, about. now San Diego. But the thing was San Diego. What? Did you expect it to be what it was? Were you able to go walk the gaslight, uh, gaslamp district? No. Wala? No. Nope. a base. Ka lang. <laughs> You're on the base. Yeah. Your whole boot camp's on the base. And uh, right next to the Marine Corps boot camp down in San Diego. Much better now because Navy boot camp is in Great Lakes, Illinois now. Okay. Right? They, they shut down the San Diego. So we were one of the last classes to go through San Diego. Which is great because you know you got the sunlight. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it was more about proving to myself that I can hack this. As you know, you know me growing up, I, I did the school the school tour. Right, right? the campus tour. <laughs> the campus tour. <laughs> <laughs> San Agustin, Don Bosco. You, you know, bunch of different schools, and one of them was actually Far East Military Academy, FEMA. Nairi ko niyon, yeah. Nairi ko ni FEMA, yeah. Right. Um, and two of my well-behaved brothers were also sent there. So my dad only sent well-behaved students to FEMA. <laughs> so three of us. Uh, um, my younger brother never had the, uh, the pleasure of hanging out <laughs> <laughs> in a boarding school. Huh? So to me, it was like, oh, I've already done kind of this before. Yes, yes. I know about discipline, and uh, I think I can take it. And, you know, compared to everyone else, uh, I was shocked because uh, people were like, crying in their bed for their mom and I want to go home um, you just kind of get to a point where you suck it up and you know think about the next evolution think about the next day right and then uh, you know because you know growing up in the Philippines you have good handwriting so I was the scribe lucky I, me of course <laughs> and then I was in band right mm-hmm. so I was on the graduation the high school I mean yeah. the, uh, the boot camp graduation band because I kind of played the drums so I was the uh, so that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bass, yeah. Kick, yeah bass drum, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. What do you call it? The Energizer Bunny. The Energizer Bunny, correct. Um, but, you know, it wasn't to skate away from all the other stuff. They were trying to keep me plump, <laughs> not, not skinny, right? So, um, you know, I had a good, really, I had a good experience at boot camp, whereas a lot of people don't. And then you get your orders, and then they send you to wherever you want. Where were you first assigned? Well, you know, they first give you a wish list. <laughs> No, we're gonna then eggshells then. Wish list, you know, oh. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wish dream. list. It's a dream list. <laughs> a dream one. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be stationed? Yeah. Hawaii, <laughs> San Diego, <laughs> Miami, right? Yeah, and uh, I got Bremerton, Washington, which is uh, north, you know, north yeah. Washington. Uh-huh. Um, cold, 
not my vibe, right? You know, it's not what I grew up with. You know, I want to be near the beach. Yes. Um, but, you know, you, you kind of take the order. You don't have a choice at this point. You sign a contract. You know, you, you stick to it. And I think joining the military does teach you you stick to your commitments, right? You don't break them. So with, with anything after that, it comes from passing through that first phase of sticking to what you committed to doing. If I have too many hand movements, let me know. No, 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 you're good, you're good. You're um, very interesting. So to me, that was, that was very cool. Uh, I got to go get deployed, you know, we were on a ship and- um, Deployed all, where? You know, different countries. Okay. It, it, well, there, there's a six month tour called the West Pack, okay, I was gonna ask, Western so Pacific region. You were, you were on a ship for six months. Straight. Straight. Yeah. Well, I mean, not straight, but I guess on and off, you would go to Australia, get off the ship, you know, um, for two days, go to Hawaii, do the same thing. So we, we were going everywhere, Hawaii, Japan, Dubai, you know, Diego Garcia, you kind of yeah. do the Western Pacific tour. And, you know, as a new... Was this on an aircraft carrier or... No, 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 no. I, I was on, a, on an oiler, an ammunition okay. oiler. Okay. We call it a floating bomb. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Goodbye. <laughs> right. We carried all the weapons uh -huh. and all the, 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 gas. the fuel. Yeah. Right. So it's a gas truck for the bums. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was very interesting. Um, it, I think when you come in unrated, meaning you don't know what you really want to do. Yes. You kind of rotate through different departments and figure out, you know, I know I don't like the kitchen. This is too hot. <laughs> Right? I don't like the back of the kitchen because I'm really bad at peeling potatoes. Uh, I don't want to be in laundry. I don't want to be in the bank because we do have a, you know, accounting yes. bank. Um, I don't want to be cutting hair. Right? So there's a whole bunch of different things. So um, provocational pala, no? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. You know, that, that's when you come in, we call it unrated. Okay. Right? Because this guy doesn't, doesn't know what he do to do. He has no skills yet. Right. And you, they put you in different departments. So... The, way, the one where I really stood Excel. out in was the, the weapons department. So I was a gunner's mate. At that point, I, I started studying to become a gunner's mate. Um, so you learn about different systems, different big guns, small guns, handguns, long guns, etc. And we maintain and we shoot a lot, right? So that's right. what we did. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, to me, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> being, being that I grew up in the Philippines, being in the Navy was the best for anybody who can speak Tagalog. I'll tell you that right Kasi now. Puro Pinoy. Everybody who makes decisions on these <laughs> ships, on any base, is a Filipino chief. Okay? Galeg, no? Absolutely. I mean, the best. Uh, you, want, you want Sinigang on the boat? <laughs> oh, the guys who run the kitchen, they have Sinigang every Wednesday. <laughs> Galeg, man. I was like, man, that's why it was so easy for me, maybe. You know? Um, wow. You want your laundry done uh, like this really fast, no? You, these guys, are, they hook you up, the chiefs, they hook you up. <laughs> and you know, as a, as a young recruit with no rank, really, at, at the end of the day, you're not really supposed to be hanging out Correct. with, you know, with all, yeah. the jefes, you know, the chiefs. But they go, oh, so I'm gonna, we're gonna, when, when we go to the boat to uh, leave, we're gonna go hang out, karaoke tayo. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, absolutely. <laughs> you hang out with the chiefs. Because, you know, young sailor, you have no money. Yeah. I was telling my wife, you know, she goes, how much would you have when you guys go out? $20 if you're lucky. If you're lucky. If you haven't already spent it all. Grabe, no? Incredible. Um, so, yeah, it was good to kind of have the camaraderie on the boat. And back then, you know, we made Yossi also on the fantail. It's mostly, you know. Oh, Pinoy, 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 Pinoy gang. Pinoy, Pinoy. <laughs> Better your dad when he found out that you were joint with that you enlisted. Um, what was the conversation? He was less than elated, I guess. He wanted me to go to U.S. Naval Academy, you know, do that. Like be an officer, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. But you know, as Frankie said, I did it my way. Mm. <laughs> That's your pride, there. Oh, yeah, okay. of course. I, you know, at the end of the day, sure, it was a great idea, but. I, I think, you know, to, to have made that decision on your own was a, a crucial turning point. I think in the end, my dad was proud of me as well. Um, you know, we talked about when I was doing healthcare work, he asked me if I was happy. I go, I'm pretty happy. You know, money's pretty good. Um, he goes, well, what about the other thing? You know, 
that, that's when I started my other company. And I said, yeah, I, you know what? I think that does, for me, make me really happy because what I was doing was I was helping other people, right? I was helping retirees get back uh, into the game, but we'll get more into that yeah, later on if you want. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, how many years did you do in the, in the Navy? 20? Did you complete 20? <laughs> Five? <laughs> Four, if I was lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just did one tour and then uh, went into the reserves and stayed mm. in the reserves. Right. Uh, for a little bit, until about 2017, I believe. That was so, none. You mentioned the healthcare. You went into... Yeah, I went into, um, you know, when I left the Navy, I went to get a degree in marine technology. So, ito na, wait, you na college ka... Through the Navy or after well, through, the Navy? Through the Navy. It's, which is it's cool. Both, least, which they combine yeah. some stuff. So, so at least you went, you went to college then pala, no? It went, I went to a place called the College of Oceaneering, okay. <laughs> which was then uh, taken over by National University, yeah. where I became an actual instructor there as well as a professor. So I, I taught uh, diving and hyperbaric medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so it really does go back to what the old Navy divers would do, right? When yes. you go too deep, yes. you're there too long, or you hold your breath and you go up and you get the bends. Yep. So they were in the process of putting these in hospitals to help patients with non-healing non -healing wounds yeah. patients. Yeah, because right? you know, you're sore when you're under, under dialysis, you have bed sores and all that. Eh? Oh yeah, pressure ulcers. Yeah. So, you know, that that's kind of what I got into um, when I was done doing all the studying. I worked at UCLA when we opened the new program there. Still single at this point? <clears throat> I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be careful with uh, your answers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to uh, rewind that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so UCLA, okay. We, you know, we put in a hyperbaric unit there. And from there, I just, you know, my, my that healthcare part of the career took off from running chambers to going inside the chambers to being a dive medic, a certified hyperbaric tech. So I went through that pathway, became a manager, became a supervisor, became a regional director, became regional vice president. So I've, I've gone as far, I think, as I as you could go. go. Yes. Um, and I was doing all the deals with the hospitals, getting the contracts with the hospitals. Right. And then I would visit, make sure operationally it was working fine. Now, now while you were doing this, because when you were in the Navy, you were in charge of weapons. I'm pretty sure it rubbed off on you. So, nung tapos ka na, nung nasa reserve ka na, would you shoot on weekends? No, you know, not really. And that's a misnomer. A lot of folks think military guys would go out on weekends you and know, shoot. I was going <laughs> to. Right? Um, no, you don't want to do what you were doing for work anyways, right? Outside of work. Um, the diving part, uh, absolutely. I love yeah. I love diving. Um you know, I was I was uh, exposed to a lot of cool dive equipment mm. uh, in the Navy. So, you know, do, doing uh, working with teams that were dealing with underwater explosives to get rid of them. What the heck? <laughs> you want it crazy here? I'm not allowed to be exposed to fish. Different fish. <laughs> Different explosives. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I worked in an uh, explosive ordnance disposal, My which goodness. is the uh, the Navy's bomb squad, yeah, basically. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's very interesting with, with, you know, the different breathing systems and the different devices we were able to play with. So we, we did a lot of surface warfare and we did a lot right. of underwater warfare as well. So that's, that's the skill that I learned the hyperbaric stuff in the Navy as well. That's the skill that I took out with me, right, with, with the hopes that we can use it to help other people as well, um, you know, heal their wounds, yes. et cetera. To me, it was foreign because I'm used to treating divers with the bends, and now I'm treating, you know, Regular seniors people. with yeah. wounds, geriatric, pressure yeah. ulcers and diabetic foot ulcers, and they're losing their toes. Yeah. Um, and what our job was was to prevent, you know, them from losing their toes, right? To keep them walking. Correct. That was the important part. So. And then you had that conversation with your dad. That was you went into this business that. Yeah, we talked about it. He asked me if I was happy, and I said, "Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm I think I'm pretty happy." At this point, was your dad retired or? Oh no, he was way retired. My dad had me when he was 56. Okay, okay. So this this was a uh, conversation probably in his late 80s. Oh. Right, and I said, you know, I do want to do something that would help 
those who retired uh, from service to get back in the game and give back. A lot of people when I was in Navy, I saw them being forced out into retirement. At a certain rank, you don't move up, you gotta move out. This is how it works, right? So we call it high year tenure. And these guys still had something to give back. Right. And what's a better way, you know, to keep them engaged, keep their clearance going, and keep them working uh, in retirement? And that, that's when we came up with the concept of the company CT Watch. Um, we started with dive programs, right? You know, to train, train police divers, yeah. you know, uh, train public safety divers. And then we transitioned from that to doing other stuff. How's that sound? Good. <laughs> Masyadong general yung other stuff eh. Yun ang gusto ko malaman eh. He wants to get specific. Yung ba yung mga... Mala Jack Ryan ba ito? I can tell you. Oh, but I can tell you, Paco, but I'll have to kill you. <laughs> no, I won't do it. Okay, someone else will. <laughs> erase, erase. I, joke, I, kid, I, kid, I kid, I kid, I joke, I joke. Okay, okay. Um, the other stuff is more human intelligence related, open source intelligence related. Mm. Um, you talked about active shooters earlier. Yes. How do we detect early? Yeah. You know, when you post something online, you might as well put a billboard on Sunset Boulevard, correct? Grabe, no? I, I, I hope that that statement reverberates with everybody talaga. Right? True. And if it's a threat, eventually someone's going to see it. Kids see it. They report it to their parents. Parents report it to the principal. Get the word out there as soon as possible, right? So... You know, some of the, the techniques that we train our clients is how to look forward, how to make prevention a reality. How do we prevent these types of events from happening? This is not, not just school shootings. There's also terrorism-related yes. things that we deal with. So, you know, Excuse me. Prevent without really stepping on their rights. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to define you know, where, where you're going to go and the country already has done that, right? We have yeah. the constitution. So you, you can't impede on someone's, you know, freedom of speech. Correct. But I think it goes to, but then again, to, to Charlie, a certain level. That, you know, when they, when they, when they, um, when they post online or whatever, they, they hide behind that um, freedom of speech. Well, until it becomes a criminal threat, then mm. Freedom of speech, all you want. Can you give them an example? Okay. Like me saying, like, what would be freedom of speech? Like, well, I hate can, the government. Well, yeah, that, you can say that. I mean, you can say whatever you want, really. But, uh, to the point where you're not threatening, ah, right? Yes, a specific yes, group of people yes. or a specific person, and you don't have the capability to carry out those threats. So, again, we're back to context, yes. right? So, you have to have good context as well when you're looking at these things. And, you know, the FBI is really good at making sure they do not trample on your constitutional rights. So they're always looking out for these types of things as well. So when you say looking out for these type of things as well, yung mga sinasabi ba ni Edward Snowden may katotohanan ba yun? No comment. Exactly. <laughs> That was good. You tried. <laughs> he tried, guys. I love you, but I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to. I He did give out some information he should have never given out. But uh, yeah. But you know, no matter where you sit, right? I think at the end of the day, the important thing is how do we manage these threats and how do we make sure. Number one, you don't trample on people's constitutional rights. You, when you act too soon, you go, well, how'd you find out? Ah, uh, uh, you violated my rights, uh, right? Uh, that I sue you. Uh, or you, and then an action happens, uh, and then people end up dying. Ah, uh, you too, didn't act soon enough. Too late now, I'm gonna sue you too. So it's kind of like, damn if you do, damn if you don't, right? There is a delicate balance in between uh, that law enforcement takes. So. They can do that. There are red flag laws. There, people report you. You have domestic violence. You shouldn't have any weapons. It's it's those things. That's why they're putting those rules there. Correct. Right. But at the end of the day, if a citizen reports you and says, "Hey, I think this person is going to do this 
and they have the means, they have, you know, the absolute, you know, uh, posts online saying, I'm going to do this on this day, they have to look into it, right? So we, when you're, we ask that question, report suspicious activity. And it doesn't come from the government. Everyone thinks the government's that good at doing what they're supposed to do. No, they're only as good as their private sector partnerships. So if the government is partnered with the private sector and the private sector is good, i.e. our citizens yes. at reporting, right. right, reporting the right thing, not cats in trees, mm. then maybe, maybe we can prevent more of these tragedies from happening. Like you, Carl. Eh, dun sa part na sinasabi mong ganon, uh, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Among everybody here in the studio right now, you're the person with more stories or more. You've witnessed stuff that we probably can only guess or second guess. So, ikasama ka sa mga taong um, may mga ginagawa. You're part of the solution, which is why we're able to sleep at night. Pero ang tanong dito is, are you able to sleep at night knowing what you know? Like a baby. <laughs> so we're secure. Para mo siya sa we're secure. We're secure. As, as yeah. I mean. We know we have a lot of real dedicated people out there that are doing what they're supposed to be doing mm. to protect us. Yes. Not just here. About abroad. Especially abroad. abroad right? Yeah, of course. Really, really hardworking, patriot, patriotic people. So yeah. I do, and I do trust that, right? We have people that are not there setting us up to fail. We have people out there trying to help us be more safe. Correct. And you have to look at it in that light, you know, versus people out there trying to trample on, you know, there's, yeah, there are bad apples, I'm sure, that are out there. Um, but for the most part, they're really, really good people. And I'll tell you what, they don't get paid that much money. Yun na nga eh. Dedication talaga eh. Diba? It's real Commitment. dedication. Yeah. Yeah. Tapos, you, uh, okay, regular citizens like us who complain, who bicker, who think that we know more than what um, the people running the show do know, how far off is society compared to what it actually is? They're accusing the state of I, I would say pretty far, pretty far from the actual reality, especially nowadays that everyone is so, they're so divided. Yeah, they're, 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 so, there's such a big gap, yeah. right? Um, you know, lucky for us, there are still people that are in the center, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That, that, that have some rationality in them. You have to be rational. The minute you go fringe on one side or the other, it's fringe. You just lose it. I've lost friends uh, in two election cycles um, because they really go far, far, far. Like, what happened to you? You know? <laughs> like, my gosh. But just bring it to the middle. Uh, it's almost as if, and I can't even blame the pandemic for this, but it's almost as if everyone lost their sense of taste, feel, and touch as well as their emotional intelligence. They don't look at it. You know, how do you... How do you solve a problem right. when you're just going to stick to that and you're going to stick to that and there's no going to the middle at all? Naging it's talk really to the hand, there, diba? Naging para, talk to the hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's, it's not one or the other. It's both. Both, yeah. You know? And we did say we weren't going to go into politics, so sorry about that. Mm. Um, but again, it really is about bringing people together, right? And I think what we do, keeping people safe, yeah. I think every side wants that. Yes. Right? It's keeping not, our kids safe. not red, not blue. I mean, keeping everybody safe. Exactly. Exactly. No matter what your feelings are. You have kids? No. You plan to have kids? Not sure. <laughs> that I'm always watching. Huh? My wife's going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, the reason why I asked is because your, your career demands your commitment, eh? And you're having to explain this, like what, the, like what we're talking about. This can come in in a presentation, some boardroom, some some organizations, diba? What, whatever, whatever you're telling us really reverberates and resonates, and everybody benefits from from being safe. I would hope so, diba? Yeah, absolutely. 
But let's let's you know, let's talk about you see I'm in the back door. Someone leaves the back door open, whether it's uh intellectual property, whether it's physically your back door or you know what I mean? How frustrating can it be? Because uh, pagdating ng part na yon, now you're looking for a cure to to fix a, a dumb move that someone actually did. Right. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's, it's just one person. You know, within the entire security uh, parameter of yes. an organization or even a house, right? You lock your front door every night. Yes. Right? Do you leave the back door open? Dapat hindi, di ba? <laughs> Do you leave the windows open? You know, I think coming from that concept, it's important. Well, how do I know the back door's open? Our location is so big. Mm. Call it checking it. Um, <laughs> you, you know, do the rounds. That's why yes. you hire a security guard. Yes. And my biggest frustration is when we go to organizations and say, oh, that's security's job. And we say security is everyone's job. Right? You got Galing, congregants, no? you got congregants here. You, you have people going to church. You have people uh, going to school. You have people coming to work. At a supermarket, you know, the, the least you can do is at least, right, fix those errors, those human errors. And a lot of them are human errors. Yeah. When you talk about cybersecurity, it's the same thing, right? It takes one person to click that phishing link and your entire computer system Wala na. Mm. has ransomware. One, right? two, three, four, five, six, na yung password mo. Kalinig right. pa yung <laughs> phishing link. <laughs> password one, two, three. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> he's, changing already. he's changing his password. How do you know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, again, it, it's the same concept, right? Yeah. Who is the weakest link in your security chain? It's a human being. Mm. We can all be socially engineered. People can fool you. People can call you from Nigeria and tell you you won $10 billion and you have to send a million to them in order to collect the Correct. 10 billion people still fall for it today people Grabe, still no? fall for it right so it's it's very important that organizations understand you know they are only as good as their weakest link when it comes to security you can have cameras because the first thing people ask us is how many cameras should we put up and cool forget the cameras how many people should you train i think that's the more important thing uh you should have some policies and procedures you should follow them follow up does your company create policies and procedures for organizations we or? do we do okay. we do um and i didn't want to turn this into a sales thing no 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 it, no th this more goes to the human nature that we really have to address it's really training human beings you know how to spot how to assess right and then how to keep their organization safe it's very very important right and i, I am a part of this group called infraguard which is a it's called InfraGuard, it's Infrastructure Protection. It is an FBI program, and I am one of the government sector chairs okay. for that, for Los Angeles. So we cover seven counties wow. all over LA. And we do provide a lot of training to everyone within the critical infrastructure sectors. Schools, museums, energy sector, entertainment sector. And we provide a lot of this education to those members for free. And it's free to join. Oui. It's free to join. I mean, you just, you just have to pass the FBI background check. Um, oh, yun. <laughs> that's the caveat. That's the caveat. Um, but again, it's really good. We have hospitals. We have school administrators that are part of it. And it, it really does bring together the private and the public sector so that they can learn from other best practices. There are things you can do for free. You don't have to spend a million dollars in a security system. There are things you can do for free. Like, shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Duh! And then you have to explain to them why. Why, right? What to look out for, you know, what surveillance looks like. What, you know, if, if you look at the Buffalo shooting, that kid was a uh, white kid walking in a, you know, ethnic neighborhood, pretending to be homeless, mm -hmm. and nobody noticed. I'm sure people noticed, right? You know, he, he, he was just doing surveillance. That's what he was doing, right? He was scoping out the place. He drew a map. He did a lot of things to plan this 
this attack. It here. wasn't a spur of the moment. Ah, oh, let no. me shoot some people. No, we have a saying, nothing happens in a vacuum, right? Mm. Every one of these criminals, active shooters, terrorists, they go through a whole cycle, right? And start with identifying your target, doing surveillance, deciding which one you want to hit, and then doing a dry run, and then actually attacking, and then escaping. So they really, whether they like it or not, they have to go through this process. There's no checklist, right? It's like innate yung process. Na yun, eh, Absolutely. No? It's built in. Every criminal does it when they're planning to do something. They all do it. Smashing grabbers. They do it. They know where they're going to They go on their phone. They go, oh, here's the parking lot. Here's the store. Here's the jewelry store. They, you can do it, right? You, you can go on Google. Google Oculus. Yeah, yeah look Google at, Maps. So, you know, they would use that to identify their targets. And then they would actually drive around and do surveillance and see, is there a security guard? Is he armed? These are things that the bad guys do all the time. And it's up to us as the good guys to teach the other good guys that's what that looks like. Now, am I, he hasn't committed a crime yet, so what can I do? Yeah, I was going to ask. Right? Thank you for... There's nothing you can really do, yeah. but you show force. How? You show that you took down their license plate. You know, you, you show to them that you're keeping an eye out. I got, uh, you're not the security guard on the phone uh, watching the basketball game or, or playing Nintendo or whatever, Tetris, right? So pay attention <laughs> to your surroundings. Yeah. It's very important because there's no... There's no point having a security guard there who's just watching soccer or Correct. basketball all the Correct. time, right? So keeping an eye out. And, and for everybody else that is part of that organization, it's also their job. You see a weird guy in your parking lot? Report it. Yeah, he might, might not be doing anything you know, illegal, right? But uh, at the end of the day, at least you're letting people know you're watching out. But, okay, question. When you report it, like I personally, I'm under the impression that if I report it and it's benign, meh, I feel like you lang ginagawa ng ano yun, ng, ng police department. Okay, whatever. You did your part and there's a record that you reported it. And that's important. Okay. Right? And that's what I tell people all the time. Well, they never do anything. I understand it's frustrating. They're not going to come to you and say, hey, Paco, can you be part of this investigation? We need you to go undercover. Correct. That's not going to happen. You're not going to get a fruit basket. You're not going to get a thank you card. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you might get a phone call back. Mm. You might not. But as long as you file the report, right, there's a record of it. And you make a record of it as well. Because if something does happen, it boils down to one word. Liability. Yeah. Who's liable? Now it's them. Correct. Because oh, I, I reported it. it. Yeah. Right? And if you own that facility or you are the person who owns that program for that organization, you own the threat. You own it. Mm. You be super cool it. And you keep calling and putting reports in. The guy keeps coming by doing surveillance. There's nothing fancy about our building to be photographed, right? Th these are all signs and pre-incident indicators of pre-attack surveillance. You just got to really own it, you know, and be cool it and cool it. Make them cool it. But they can't arrest you for being kulit. Yeah. Right? They can't. Uh, the same token, you can't arrest them f for being kulit either. You can't. can't. So it's so a stalemate at, until someone it's makes a move. It's a stalemate until, until they notice that you notice them. Right? It is totally frustrating because there's nothing you can do, as you said, pre-crime. Yeah. They have to actually commit a crime in order to be arrested. So. Dang. Grabe, no? So this, this, this business, this career, you like this better than the hyperbag chamber? I, you know, I think we make a huge difference within this realm. And it brings community because it's about safety. Correct. And I think everybody needs to be yes. part of the safety solution, right? So it's school safety, it's church safety, it's safety for our critical infrastructure, we're doing things within every sector, and we have 16 critical infrastructure sectors, including water and nuclear power and, Whoa. And, and all that, right? So helping them help themselves do assessments and figure out where their weaknesses are. Where would the bad guy hit me tomorrow? And right? you know what? Okay. Yung, yung question na yon, when will the when would the, um, when or even where diba, will the bad guy hit me? Or where will the bad guy hit me tomorrow? 
ano yun eh? That's, that's, that's very humbling to even ask that question. It's not like being the Titanic na I'm unsinkable. Di ba? May mga... Until then, you hit the iceberg. Uh, until you hit the iceberg, <laughs> right? So, kung baga, know where the iceberg is. Right. For God's sake. Di ba? Para hindi ka... So, this, this um, philosophy, this is applicable in everything you do in life, eh, di ba? Na, na sa ka ba mahina? Pretty much, yeah. It's a self-assessment. Self-assessment. Yep. Absolutely. Know your weaknesses, right? When you're interviewed for a job, some of the questions I ask, are, what are your weaknesses? Parang ano? And a lot of people don't want to answer it. Yun nga eh, parang there's this um, job candidate, no? Um, sinabi, oh, nakalagay dito, mabilis ka sa math. What's a... Uh, 144,352 divided by 72.5. Sabi nung applicant, 82. Mali yung sagot mo. Oh, pero sir, mabilis naman ako sa math. Mabilis ako sumagot. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I was like, wow. That's good. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Where's my calculator? <laughs> Number so, computer ko. Di ba? <laughs> now, now you're in the private sector. If the government, mali pala, let me rephrase the question. Are you, are you, are you able to follow in your father's footstep and actually go into the CIA? Or are you part of the CIA? Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't <laughs> deny Jason Bourne. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Okay, okay. Um, No, we, we have a lot of subject matter experts that come mm. out of different government organizations. Agencies. Yeah. Yeah. That, that come over to us, you know, post retirement. Angaling. Yeah, post retirement. And, you know, they, they do different types of training for us, uh, different type of consulting for our clients. We have nonprofits, you know, we have schools, et cetera. So, you know, it's. From the it's, intelligence community, to mga to. It's, it's both, from law both. enforcement and intelligence. Yeah. So it's, it could be federal, it could be state, it could be tribal, uh, it could be city government, right? But the, the one common thing is the, the factor that we look at is counterterrorism. If they have a good background, uh, and it's word of mouth in, in, in this community, right? So you, you have an actual background in counterterrorism, because if you can counterterrorism, you can pretty much counter everything else. That's the thought process, right? Counter crime, you know, you counter active shooter, you can counter anything. So, you know, we, we focus the company and in, in, we're a defense contractor. So we're not a security guard company. Yes, so we don't yes. provide, none of these guys will stand outside with a gun. Right? No. <laughs> That's not their job. Okay, there's a coach who's going to the neighborhood watching. Right. <laughs> Plus, it, the, the concepts that they come up with is why are we, are, why are we expecting an attack? So you know, we can I, prevent it. Alam mo, Charlie, ang napansin ko with this conversation we're having, you're very, you are very aware of the why factor. Eh, no? There has to be a why because otherwise, there's no whole context. Ng- Absolutely. Yeah, you have to have a why, right? Um, and for us, really, prevention, mm. right, is the best solution, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's one of the most frustrating things, you know, you, school, you see with a lot of these schools and a lot of these, you know, organizations is oh we trained for that you trained for what a disaster did you train to prevent it right now we have a big push in hospitals here in california there's a law workplace violence prevention law right here in california and hospitals are going to be fined if they are not able to prevent a violent patient from hitting a nurse or a doctor Got it. they have to report it to the state from now on And that is part of prevention, mitigation. So you really, people really need to start thinking about mitigation way, ver- oh, versus okay. just reaction and yes. recovery. Yes. And they've only, you know, there's a, there, there's a um, disaster cycle that the first half of the circle is prevention, mitigation. And then the second half is, oh crap, it, it happened already. And now we have to stop the bleeding, right? Yeah. So. You know, really only people train to that bottom half. They never train to the top half because they don't know where to start. Sabi nga nila, di ba? Sabi nila, Charlie, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Absolutely. Di ba? In that case, I'll take 12 ounces. <laughs> Para yung mag-asawa, right? Para yung mag-asawa yun eh. Yung Absolutely. 
pa, kakikilala pa lang nila biglang sinampal ng babae yung lalaki. Sabi ng lalaki, ba't mo sinampal? Wala pa naman ang ginagawa. Huwag mong antayin may gawin ka. <laughs> Hindi lang sampal ang makukuha. <laughs> Ayoko ka na, nagbubuka ako. <laughs> Nakakadalawa na ako, guys. Ayoko ka na. <laughs> but, but it's true eh. What you're saying is so, is so true. Because there was this one time, I actually told my, my children, why are you going to come with me with bad grades? And then now I have to talk to, to your teachers. And this is not even about protection we're talking about prevent preventing diba give me homework mo gawin mo yung homework mo araw-araw do the activities every day wala akong kakausapin na teacher about bad grades and and i'm glad you're saying this because napansin mo ba have we become more um how do i say about uh masyado ba tayong relaxed when it comes to our own safety that's my that's my you know well, and what's your observation yeah me i'd be talking in generalities if i if i said yes and no but you know i do notice that nowadays people sacrifice uh safety for convenience explain that well you know let's say you're downloading an app to your brand new iphone yeah it's not this is not a physical thing it's more of a cyber thing and if you knew back i don't know 10 years what these companies were doing with your information on your phone, including your photos, Totoo and yan, your diba? videos, and your contacts, and your GPS location everywhere you've been, right? Would you still say I accept when I download this app? Probably not. If you read the fine print, you're going to go, yeah, I don't think so. What do they actually do? Well, they share it. They sell it to advertisers. They sell it to other companies. It, it's... It's been done for the longest time when you signed up for your first AOL email account. Mm. No one knew that they were going to monetize us, right? We're being monetized. Yes, yes. Every day. I know this is a tough subject to talk about, but um, you well, know, we at, need to talk at, about at this. At the end of the day, yeah. we created such a huge digital trail that for people, yeah, it's all good. I got nothing to lose, right? Until the bad guy is able to go online and Google you and find every little bit detail of your life and use that to socially engineer your bank to give your house to them. Okay, so yes, we have sacrificed our own safety for convenience. And that's only one example. Like right? how many times do we give our social security number away online, diba? Right? Absolutely. Nowadays, giving away your phone number alone right. might as well be your social security number. Might as well be. Because once I have your phone number, I have everything. Oh my God. Oh and that's man. anybody that can use Google. Okay. So anybody who knows how to use open sources, open yeah, source intelligence, yeah. it's not that hard. Are you mga life lock, life lock na to? May, are they, are they? You can life lock away, but people still give out and put out their information no matter what. So you got to stop the information. The bleeding. The bleeding. Oh. You really have to stop it. And, and, and that's the biggest issue is, you know, we, we've given up a lot of safety stuff because it's convenient. Is it reversible? Is it, is it, is it? Yeah, you, you can do something about it now. And, you know, when we do talk to some clients about, hey, you know, my phone got a uh, SIM swap. You know what SIM swapping yeah. is, right? Where they steal your SIM card and they get the SMS. Yeah, mm. I confirm it's me. Here's the code. Yep. And now I'm logging to your bank. I took all your crypto out, right? Gone. Goodbye. There is a way, right? And unfortunately, nowadays, you have to have essentially two identities. One that you would use online with a fake email, uh, fake burner number. When you go to the restaurant, what do they ask you for? No. Yeah. Your phone number. My phone number. Sa ano, di ba? Sa pag mag reserve ka, di ba? Who texts you when your table's ready? Yes. Or, who are you selling my phone number to? Oh, we don't know. Right? So... I just use a regular burner number when I check into American Airlines or when I go to a supermarket for the Ralph's card. Or right. I use a completely different number. I don't use one that's completely associated with all of my information anymore. You have to. It's not being paranoid. To me, it's stopping the bleeding. It, it's stopping that digital trail, right? I'm not running from the government. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm hiding my information from adversaries, 
right? That can right. take me down and take us down or take my company down. So it's very important. A lot of C-suite level folks and high net worth individuals are doing this not just for them, but they're for their families. They're even blurring out Google images of their homes Grabe, on Google Maps. No? This is how far people have to go, right? In order to protect their own privacy. Yeah. So, wow. I hope I answered that question. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tapos ngayon, now that we're going cyber, yung mga deep fake pa na, na mga ano, di ba? Na mga facial... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, yeah they, there is an estimation that by the next election cycle, there's going to be so many deep fakes, you're not going to know which candidate is saying the real thing. And, you know, it, it really depends on your ability to discern. To, to discern, number one, and be objective, number two, and number three, to double check, right? To fact check. There's technology companies now coming up with technology to determine what's a deep fake and what's not. So Galing. hopefully by then, all of that comes out. And at the bottom of the video, it'll say, this is a deep fake. Yeah. Don't believe anything. This, yeah. So there, there should be warning signs because, as you can see, people are very um, amenable. Yeah. Messages. Diba? Narinig lang nila, uy, share na kagad. Obviously. Yeah. They don't confirm the information before they share it. And how many times a day I have to tell somebody, this is fake? <laughs> how do you know? So I have to prove now it's fake. And I'm like, oh, I don't have the bandwidth. You know, how do, we, how do you battle misinformation and disinformation in a misinformation age? Yeah. That's where we're at. That is where we're at. So what, what steps do we need to take to protect our information maliban sa having to to identities. Ano pa? What else can we do? Well, I would definitely... Oh, know. by the way, before I answer that, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just like, because Michael drives a Tesla. That's like your information right there in that car already, di ba? Well, of course, he told the whole world he drives a Tesla. Right. By the way, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, by the way, it's blue. <laughs> Should we give away the uh, license plate number? Pero di ba? It's, it's, ganun, ganun na rin, eh, no? Yeah, Tesla's a, you know, it's a technology company, right? Yeah. So, obviously, you know, they, you have given away a lot of your information, but luckily for them, they, they're using it for diagnostic Correct. stuff, right? Yes, so, at yes. least they're using it for the good of, of the lifespan of the vehicle, updating software, etc. But the so, dojo computer, nila, no? oh my God. That, but, but they also do insurance, right? You have the option. So, if, oh, you're, yeah? cra oh, if you're a crazy driver, they know about it. Wow. Absolutely, they know about it. <laughs> wow. Your, your insurance rates could be you know, could, a little yeah. higher, you know, if you're You can't uh, lie about that aggressive. anymore. Oh, Because you know, oh, no. now they have access to your car, right? So it's very, very uh, impressive what they've done. Let's go back to your question. Yeah, though. my question now. What was that again? Okay, so aside from the double identity, <laughs> what, what other steps can we take to... You know, in, in to a... To lessen our footprint, is that the right word? Absolutely. You're, you're dig I call it digital exhaust. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's like exhaust from your car, right? Um, the one thing that we've advised clients to do is any email address that's associated with any of your bank, anything banking related, mortgage related, get a different email address. Use that from now on. Go to Proton, use that, and only use that one email address for all your banking stuff. Mm. So you get an email or a spoof email to your Gmail that you were using previously, and obviously you already know that's garbage, Correct. right? So you don't really have to click the link and fall for it again, because I'm telling you, every day, people click on links that they shouldn't be clicking on. Don't click on links, anybody, even if it's from your own mother or your Lolo yeah. or anybody. <laughs> Do not click on links that are sent to you via text message uh, or email. Correct. So a good way to start there is get a completely separate email address and listen you're gonna you might hate me for this but if you are getting that email address for free you are the product does that make sense perfect sense if it's a free email address you got one product so you know that's that's the risk you're taking uh so you know, I, I personally I use Proton Mail. Proton I have, Mail. I have to okay. pay for it, right? And I, it comes with the VPN and everything. So that, that really helps because that's the second th VPN very important. Would you recommend Absolutely. that? Absolutely. 
Even on your phone. My kids have B- VPN. They're only 14. Para daw hindi ko sila matrack. Loko-loko yung mga yun. Eh, no? <laughs> <laughs> Sa akin ginagamit. Anyway. Really? So, ay, na, joke. <laughs> Tatlo na ha. Ayoko na. <laughs> It's a good idea to have it on your phone too. VPN, okay. Yeah, pero when you Google something and your VPN is pointing to Virginia. Right. Right? And you're looking for Ralph's. Mm. It's going to say, uh, you know, your drive is going to be three days. And, uh, oh, yeah. Hours. Yeah. So, you know, just understand contextually when you are Googling something and you have a VPN turn on your phone, Ralph's Los Angeles, California, or, you know, Ralph's yes. San Marino, yes. et cetera. So you got to put the location in now, right? But at least, you know, no one can technically digitally track Correct. where you're going, you know, with your phone. Not like you're hiding from anybody. Yes. You're right? just protecting what's yours. Correct. And again, you don't have to be paranoid with, mm-hmm. with some of these things. It's, 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 a, it's a fact of life. You know, these devices were designed, um, you know, to track some data in order for advertisers, who my wife's in advertising. Um, <laughs> so she hates what I do when it comes to the digital exhaust part. Because oh, you're messing things up. Or <laughs> we, can't, we can't target appropriately. Big data. Um, oh, ah, yeah. Right? But they do use this data. And... What will, what will come out next in, in, in next, the near future is browser fingerprinting. So no matter, what, no matter what you do with your VPN, you have 10 VPNs on your phone or your computer, your browser is very unique and it has a very unique fingerprint. It's about 88% accurate right now, today, right? So the FBI can still find things, and so can the government, ba- based off of your browser fingerprinting. Even if you... There's, there's nothing you can do to really get away from browser fr- fingerprinting nowadays. Yeah, not much you can do. So that's a good thing, no? So you can pretend and think you're hiding. Mm, but you're not. Yeah. But you're not, <laughs> right? But what you can do is hide from the bad guys, right? You can hide your data and your information and keep it safe from the bad guys. Now, if you're doing something illegal, just know. And you're the bad guy. There, there are technologies <laughs> out there that no matter what you do, Um, no matter what the, how many virtual machines you have, that browser fingerprint is, is very unique to each user on your phone and on your iPad and on your regular computer. So, so nakatouching browser, ano? Browser fingerprint na yun. Where is it? No, I mean, how is it attached to you? Like, is it attached to your identity or your... It's attached to everything you do digitally. Ah. Yeah. Which emails, banks, you know, sites. So in order to get a new frequent. browser fingerprint, yeah, you need a new, technically a new virtual identity or an identity. Yeah, you get a whole new computer, but then you log into the same sites over and over again. So it, That's it, your browser it's fingerprint. It's super important. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Can Incredible, right? Yeah. We're there. <laughs> We're at that age, right? So snow oh. dead na nga tayo. Snow dead right. na nga tayo. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing, he's bringing Snowden back. Hindi kasi naiintriga ako dun sa part na Now, this company that you're running, is it, are your clients, like you mentioned, schools, churches, um, different organizations, is it just for the big boys or pwede mga small businesses? Can they, can they reach out to you? Yeah, no, we, we've done a thing where every year we pick a certain number of clients that we yeah. assist, right? who are having budgetary issues. Correct. Um, they typically reach out to us already. Um, there are things that we can do that are F-R-E-E, right? So like um, a lot of my guys are LAPD, active shooter, civilian response instructors, including myself. Yes. So we will go out and uh, train and essentially show them what right. LAPD allows us to show them uh, on how to react, right? None of that essentially covers the reactionary or the prevention part of it, but at least it's something that we're able to do. Uh, we've done some of the prevention training for some of our clients mm. for free um, that do not have the funds to do it. So we do kind of, we, you know, we have to. Yeah. It's doing our part. Yes. Right? So we have to help folks out as much as possible. Now, obviously, some of my guys have to get paid, so I typically am the one who go out and vol- no. I, I volunteer, volunteer myself. Um, go, do, go out and do some good. Yes. Right? I think it's important. Uh, we are working on a couple more things to help strengthen that part of the program to assist other clients as well. 
that so, yeah. don't have something. So, looking back, no, number six of seven kids, that's you. You had to fight your way with regard to kayo magkakapatid. The first decision that you made triggered more decisions in your life. Hopefully more good than bad. Nah. Diba? 50-50. 50-50. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, after that point, yes, it was all mostly good. Yeah. <laughs> what can you advise 13-year-old kids na nag-grand, or not, not the 13-year-old, but the parents of 13-year-old kids na nag-grand theft auto, na kung saan-saan pumupunta sa internet, what advice can you give yeah. these parents? I'm very careful blaming video games because I do have some no, no, video no. game company yeah. uh, clients. Um, you, you know, I, I would just say, watch what your kids are doing uh, and set limitations. You know, and, and that's, I think that's where we have issues is parents are not setting the limitations that they should be. Keep an eye on them. I would turn the darn internet off at a certain time, right? Um, or take the phones away at a certain time. Sorry, kids. We didn't have inter- internet growing up. And look Correct. at us. I think yeah. we're doing pretty good. Um, but, you know, you do have to have those set limitations. I know it's difficult because I'll tell you what, you take a phone away from a kid, he's like you took half the lung away. Yeah. Right? Yes. Umiiyak yan. Umiiyak. Mamamatay daw sila. Oh, it's the end of my life. Yes. Um, because now I have FOMO. Exactly. So we got to get rid of the FOMO somehow. Um, but, you know, as long as you explain to them that there are actual bad people online that do intend to do harm, not all of them are bad, right? But they're there. They're in those rooms that you're going into. So be very, very careful and report, you know, at least report to the parents what you've seen um, or what messages you get. Right. You know, I, I know some of my, you know, nieces and nephews, they're all on TikTok and stuff. And just because you think I'm not in your TikTok, mm. I know people. Um, so I can see, you know, like, what the ages of people are that are making, you know, comments, you know, comments on, yeah. on a 14 year old's TikTok. It's like, come on, dude, really? They're out there. So just keep an eye on it. And I think the parent, uh, the parent, um, kid kind Child. of trust yeah. thing is very important. So you also don't want to break that trust, right? Cause then they go, as you know, they'll they, hide it even more, they go yeah. even further yeah. out. Right. So, you know, just kind of, make that a constant thing where you check in on them so that they understand that not like I'm watching you, you know, but I'm looking out for you. How do you convey that to your kids? That would be more of a question to somebody who's an actual parent like you. Right. Right. So it's difficult. I'm sure it is. My brothers have kids so, and I see the, you know, they're getting calbo or pulling I their know, hair right? out. Right? Yeah, of course. So it, it, I'm sure it's tough, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. You can't take the phone away forever. They'll get somebody else's phone, right? So you have to have that trust, that bond. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Wicker. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Diving information, Woo! guys. We'll post the link in the description. And hey, about to get in touch with Charlie. Hopefully, he'll be available to answer swipe left swipe right <laughs>